Attorney Anton Luis Avila Coy's Top 8 2019 Bar Exam Please describe your learning style like visual, auditory. I'm probably leaning towards auditory than visual. I notice that I respond better to abstraction, it might be because of my background in mathematics. So I appreciate bodies of texts better than seeing those same concepts summarized in charts, tables, or graphs. I also like attending and listening to lectures. Please share your study techniques or best review practices which you think helped you top the 2019 bar examinations. A. Memorization techniques I'm terrible at memorizing. I'm the kind of person who tries to use acronyms then fails to remember what the letters mean, more on that later. Of course, memorizing has its place in the bar and I would often force myself to memorize. Whenever I have to memorize, I find that memorizing keywords is a more effective than using acronyms. But I think the key to memory work is understanding the concept and logic behind what you're memorizing instead of relying on rote memory. B. Bar materials for the first reading, I went back to the textbooks. I stuck to one material per subject, maintaining the textbooks I read in law school which I was comfortable with and changing at a once that didn't work. Reading the textbooks gave me the confidence to deal with questions regarding concepts which were overlooked in law school. A specific example of this would be, assurance fund question in civil law. It also gave me confidence that I would be ready for any surprise questions, like matters not in the syllabus or unfair trivia questions. For the second reading, I chose to read reviewers that were not lengthy, like Nature for Polly, Sunday and Commercial. This gave me before prayers I view and gave me a sense of what were important for the bar. C. Hours of reading I would say that on a good day, I could read for an average of 8 hours. On a really good day, I could go up to labindalawang or labintatlo, but nothing more than that. Of course there are days that one can read only for 2 or 3 hours, if none at all. Life indeed has its way of disturbing you in reviewing and in only in hindsight you realize that it was a much needed break. I divide my day by reading the morning exam in the morning and the afternoon exam in the afternoon. So in my political law, labor law scheduled reading, I would read political law in the morning and labor law in the afternoon. Adjustments were made when I felt that I was behind schedule in a subject or I simply wanted to focus more on a subject that particular day. D. Review Center Coaching My main consideration in enrolling for review proper was convenience. As much as possible, I wanted to focus on the bar during the review proper. I didn't want to worry about food, laundry, lodging, money, and every other thing that would distract me from studying. Since Albano Bar Review Center ABRC came to Baguio, it was a logical choice. ABRC's classes were on the weekends so I had the weekdays to focus on study and do a little work. Being in the comforts of my home, I got everything I needed and the only thing I had to do was read. I also found the Chan Robles Pre-Week quite helpful. Their Pre-Week lectures and notes were released a month before the bar. The schedule gave me time to get the best of both worlds by attending pre-week classes for a month and read on my own at during the actual pre-week, which are usually mutually exclusive choices for the bar taker. E. Mock bar I did not participate in any mock bar except for the required mock bar from my law school. I would have wanted the but time did not permit me to do so. F. Law school training The age-old wisdom is that there is no better preparation for the bar than being prepared every day in law school. This is definitely true, but I believe not everyone has the privilege of being fully prepared for law school every day. This is especially true for those with full-time jobs and those who are supporting their families. Whatever your experience in law school, you still have one final chance to prepare for the bar during the review proper. If you can, take a leave from work or seek the understanding of your family during this time to focus on the singular goal of passing the bar G, scheduling I did the mirror method. For the first reading, I would read political law and labor first, then civil and tax, commercial and criminal law, then remedial law and ethics. 
For the second reading, I would do the reverse. Rem and ethics first, commercial and criminal law, etc. I made my schedule in such a way that I would finish my second reading just before pre-week. Then for the pre-week, I would spot check everything. I dedicated three weeks each pair of subjects for the first reading, and two weeks for second reading, and of course, isang week for pre-week. Within those periods during the day, I would read the morning exam in the morning and the afternoon exam in the afternoon. Meaning, I would read constitutional law in the morning and labor in the afternoon. I really spent some time planning the review period, planning the week, and planning the day, up to the last day of pre-week. Obsessively planning gave me some confidence that I was in control over my studies, H. Anything you wish to focus on or strongly wanted to share to law students and reviewees, e.g. Text the speech up so you can listen to review materials even while eating or before sleeping, take time to sharpen your axe. There is this analogy of a woodcutter constantly cutting trees with his axe. While his hard work gets the job done, he could cut more trees faster and more efficiently if he took time and sharpened his axe once in a while. There's no secret to passing the bar. Do the hard work, take needed breaks, and pray hard. Please share your tips on how to answer bar exam questions. Both inform how you write, print or cursive, pen use, blocking, margins, and content etc. I was working under the premise that I should make the examiners want to read my answers. In essence, you don't want the examiners to have a hard time reading your answers. So here are a few things that work for me, I use print because I have bad penmanship. I would say that though my print is not beautiful, it is legible and readable, I use black ink, Energel 0.5 ballpoint. I'm a fountain pen fan but there are just too many factors to consider in using a fountain pen. A pen was something I didn't want to worry about during the bar, in some and using a Microsoft Word analogy, my blocking was a line left rather than justified. My left margins were not perfect but quite defined. My right margins were not straight. When I ran out of space for a word, I would rather write the whole word in the next line than hyphenating it, is don't assume examiners know what they are checking. Spell it out for them. For example, suppose the question is X correct in saying that the RTC has jurisdiction over the case. My answer would be, X is correct in saying that the RTC has jurisdiction over the case, instead of, yes, X is correct. I prioritized completeness over brevity but the answers must still be as concise as possible. Technical definitions are always better than stating the law in your own words. What was your lowest moment during the bar season, if there is any? And how did you overcome it? For most of the bar preparations, the bar examinees are mostly in control of their fate. The bar examinees can build on their strengths and work on their weaknesses. The Monday after remedial law is truly the first day when the results are out of the hands of the examinees. For me, I felt that lack of control sometime around April. I was mostly distracted after the bar because I was planning for my wedding in January of 2020. After the wedding, the bar was the last thing on my mind after my wedding as I was beginning and enjoying the married life. The panic started around April. It's common knowledge that bar results are released after the Supreme Court justices meet and bank sometime around April or May. But the lockdown made the end bank sessions physically impossible. So the first time the Supreme Court announced that they were meeting and bank virtually, I started spiraling. I had two breakdowns all witnessed and suffered by my poor wife. I thank her for her patience during those times. What words of encouragement can you share to the general amidst our battle against COVID-19? Law students and bar reviewees, or to the public in I'm going to break taboo and quote myself taken from an interview. Haha, <laughs> the study of law is a daily battle against self-doubt. Everything will work against you. You will get called to recite cases you didn't read, professors will assign you readings which you will not finish, you will try to finish exams that are impossibly long, among a million other things you have to deal with in law school.
you will seldom go home feeling good about yourself. Enjoy the struggle or at least appreciate it. Those challenges will give you a brave heart and nerves of steel to face the bar examinations and ultimately, the practice of law. At the end of it all, you will see a light shining through the darkness. I know I did. Please share an instance which you think is your ember as a moment during the bar month. Anything funny, humiliating that will inform many that we don't need to be perfect in order to top or pass the bar, oh man. Ang dami nito. Haha. Overlooked spelling and grammar in the bar happens. But substantively, this one is about how bad I am at acronyms. During the bar, there was a question on habitual delinquency and of course, every law student knows that the key here is to remember F-R-E-T-S-L. I could not for the life of me remember one of the letters during the bar. Total mental block. I wrote the enumeration for my legal basis in paragraph form instead of a numbered list. I guess I got away with it.